Hello everybody, welcome back to the Medical Projects YouTube channel. If you are new around here, my name is Olivia. I am a second year medical student at King's College London. And here at Medical Projects, we create YouTube videos about how to get into medicine. And I offer all my tips and bits of advice that I have learned in my own medical school journey. You might notice that I'm in a different location to where I normally film these videos. And that is because I'm finally back at medical school, which is really exciting. So our video about what a good UCAT score is was really popular and a a lot of you guys were sending in questions about your individual scores. So we've decided we're going to be creating a couple of videos to help you out if you got a bit of a lower score than you wanted or if you got an average score. Of course, if you score highly, you can pretty much apply to wherever you want. So for today's video, I've done some extensive research into some of the universities that perhaps you should consider applying to if you've got a lower score than you wanted. But before we talk about that, very excitingly, the 2020 UCAT interim results have been released. What these results are, are they're basically the preliminary results prior to the test season ending. It's a document the UCAT consortium releases, which summarizes the average score that people seem to be getting at the moment. And it just allows you to start planning ahead for the universities you should potentially be applying to. However, it is worth noting that these are preliminary results, testing season has not ended and I would expect this year the results to be quite different anyway due to the whole coronavirus situation. So what I'm saying with these results is take them with a pinch of salt. In general, the real results that come out after testing season has finished is usually a little bit lower than these interim results, but not usually by a huge amount. So I thought I'd just explain a little bit more about how the deciles work because this is something that really confused me when I was doing my UCAT. But basically, I've got my laptop here and we are told that the preliminary total cognitive mean scale score for this year's test results is 2,578. Now, of course, remember that the UCAT score is calculated by combining the scores of the four sections and then finding the average of that score. And then your situational judgment test is a completely separate thing. So with a preliminary score of 2,578, that means that the mean average for the testing scores so far is 644.5. Now, when it comes to the decile, how this works is that if you rank in the first decile, it means that 10% of people got a lower score than you. If you rank in the second decile, it means that 20% of people got a lower score than you. So basically what you want to be doing is aiming for the top decile. So for example, if amazingly you manage to rank in the ninth decile, that means that just 10% of people got a similar score to you and 90% of people got a lower score than you. So obviously you're aiming for the higher deciles. Many unis use these deciles in their entry requirements. So for example, some unis may say we will not consider anyone in the second decile and below. So before I go on to talk about the universities you should consider applying to if you got a lower score, I thought before we started, I'd clarify what a lower score actually is. If you Google what the average UCAT score is, it tends to say between 620 and 630. So for today's video, I thought we'd consider a lower score as being 610 and below, just for argument's sake. Now, if you got 610 and below, first of all, don't be disheartened. There are still so many options. However, as I always say with medicine, half of getting in is applying in a tactful manner. So of course, if there is a university you really want to apply to, I'm not saying let your score put you off, but also maybe consider some other options that lean towards your score. Now, it is worth noting that these UCAT scores aren't concrete. Often a university will stipulate that in general they interview people with, for example, 650 above. However, if you did get below that, that doesn't necessarily mean you can't apply to that university. And the reason I say this is because I go to a university, King's College London, and this tends to be a university that is known to stipulate a higher UCAT score. However, I know many of my friends that are on the course that got a pretty average UCAT score and maybe one that would even be considered low. So my point being that if there is a dream university you really want to apply to, unless they say they point blank won't consider you if you get below their cutoff score, give it a shot. However, of course, to increase your chance of getting into medical school, it is worth applying to the universities that match up to your UCAT score. So I've got four universities for you to consider today if you got below 610. Of course, because you get four universities to choose from when it comes to picking your medical schools. So I thought this would be the appropriate amount. So the first one is Keele University. Keele stipulates that they do not consider anyone that falls into the bottom 20% of scores. And they also don't consider anyone that scores band four in situations 
additional judgment. So that pretty much means if you score in the third decile or above, and you have a band three in situational judgment or above, you have a fairly good chance of getting an interview if you meet all the other requirements. One thing to note about Keel is that they have a bit of a unique aspect to their application, and that is they use a roles and responsibilities form. And this is where you have to reflect on your work experience even more so than you already did in your personal statement, and you answer many different questions about qualities about you. And that is what is used to determine whether you get an interview. So if you do get that form, really make sure you spend some time on it and think about the things you saw on your work experience and make sure you are reflecting on those and showing how you have the qualities that are conducive to being a good doctor. They do say that the UCAT will be used in borderline cases. So for example, if you get to interview and you have two candidates that performed similarly in interview and they have the same, you know, A-level grades and GCSE grades, they will fall back on the UCAT score, but in general, this isn't really considered. So if you have a lower UCAT score, Keel might be one to consider, and it also ranks really highly in the medicine league tables. One thing to note also with Keel is if you are applying from outside the EU, you are required to sit the BMAT, not the UCAT exam. The next university I want to talk about is Cardiff University. And Cardiff has quite an interesting application process because they don't really consider the UCAT at all. Instead, they consider your GCSE and A-levels if you have achieved your A-level grades or if you are an A-level student currently they only consider your GCSEs they do not consider your predicted A-level grades so they rank you based as follows you'll be ranked based off of your nine GCSEs with three points being awarded for an A star so I think that's an eight or nine in your GCSEs two points for an A so I think that's a seven and one point for a B so I think that's a six in the new GCSE system and they say in order to meet the academic cutoff you need to get between 25 and 20 26 or between 22 and 26 if you have a contextual offer. They will then rank you according to your academic achievement and read your personal statement and rank you further on that to decide for interview. They say that they only use your UCAT exam score in borderline cases after interview. Again, if you have two candidates that are similar in academics, have a similar personal statement, that is when your UCAT score will come into play. But until then, they pretty much don't care about your UCAT score. The next university I want to talk about is Plymouth University. So they screen for your academics first and then they look at your UCAT. So again, they place a greater emphasis on your academic achievement. So if you're someone that achieves really highly in school but just didn't happen to get the score they wanted on the UCAT exam, Plymouth might be a really viable option for you. So they do have a UCAT cutoff score, which is obviously dissimilar to what Cardiff has, and that is 582.5 for 2019 entry. So even though they do have a cutoff score, that is what is considered a very low UCAT score, so it's definitely really achievable. Additionally, Plymouth do not use situational judgment, so if you do happen to score band four or band three, you should be fine. Another thing which I think is quite interesting and unique about Plymouth's application process is that they do not use the UCAT score in borderline cases. Now this is something that you've seen many universities use, they often decide between two similar candidates by referring to their UCAT score, but Plymouth does not do this and they say that the UCAT score is not considered any further after interview. So once you get to interview stage, your chance of getting an offer will be based solely off of how you perform in interview. The last university I want to talk about is Queen's University Belfast. Now I personally think this is a really great option because I love Ireland and I love the Irish accent, but that's just me. Again, Queen's University places a strong emphasis on your academics and uses a scoring system that was quite similar to Cardiff. So the scoring system for Queen's University Belfast is as follows. You get four points if you get an eight or a nine. You get three points if you get a seven. You get two points if you get a six and you get one point if you get a five. So this means that your total possible cumulative score for your GCSEs is 36. They do look at your UCAT score. However, they rate this a lot less than your academics and they score it out of a possible total of just six. The way your points are awarded for your UCAT score is based on which decile you fall into. So for example, scores they've used in the past is if you fall between 1,200 and 1,899, you get awarded zero points. If you score between 1,900 and 2,099, you get one point. If you score between 2,100 and 2,299, you get two points and so on and so forth. This means that in Queen's University Belfast, you have a total possible score of 42, 36 coming from your GCSEs and six coming from your UCAT score. So basically what I'm trying to say is that if you have a lower UCAT score, but you have really stellar GCSEs, 
you still have a really high chance of getting an interview. And in the past, the threshold score they used was 32. So those are four fantastic medical schools that don't consider the UCAT as highly as other universities do. So it just goes to show that even if you do get a lower UCAT score, if you're informed about where you can apply with your score, you really do increase your chances of getting a place at medical school. Remember, you only need one offer to get into medical school. And really, at the end of the day, wherever you go, you're going to become a doctor. And that is the most important thing. I really hope this video was informative please make sure you do some research on what universities you're applying to there will of course be more in addition to these four universities but i hope this gave you a taster of where you could apply we'll see you in next week's video for where to apply with an average ucat score but until then if you have any other video suggestions or you have any further questions about your ucat score please do leave them in the comments below and as always make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel so that you can see when we post new content thank you guys so much for watching and i'll talk to you soon.